This is Infection, the survival podcast, recorded live on Tuesday, January the 3rd, 2023, episode 416. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and a happy new year. Welcome back to Infection Podcast. My name is Nick Craig. You can check me out on Twitter at Nicholas M. Craig. You can also check out my website, nickcraig.com, or of course, uh, our illustrious website, infectionpodcast.com. Well, we wouldn't be ringing in the New Year's here if I didn't have my trusty co-host, Brian, with an I Aldridge alongside me. Brian, happy new year, my friend. Uh, hope all is uh, well in your world. Everything is going great here, and hopefully you had a new Happy New Year as well. Uh, yes, of course, sir. if you want to find me, um, you can do that through at Boise Computer on Twitter or at Brian Aldridge on most of the other places, Gab, Parlor, Getter, True Social. Uh, if you want to check out my blog, biteoftech.com, uh, you can go there and get contact information for me. Uh, put some articles up there, here and there. I'm sure I'll be posting one maybe this year. We'll see. 2019, I think, was your last article. In 2023, I actually wrote, but it's for a client, so I can't. I Your wrote last something article that I'm going to be is I'm April be billing 29th, it for a client, so I can't put it up there. April 29, 2019. I know. It's been I almost to, three I need years. To update a new one. Yeah, I need to post a new one, and then I'll. And then here's the crazy. I, I wrote this ever... really cool script, but it's like kind of boring to put on there. I remember when you wrote these. I remember when the. I remember when you did all these too. I know. Well, yeah, the... and the, the, there's. Like that server tools, they're still being used. I have people ask me to update those, so I do need to. But At Atlas, of course, they keep breaking their <laughs> Linux client, so it's like, what's the point? I get my stuff working, and then it doesn't. Theirs doesn't work for months, so it just kind of seems point. Then everybody's asking me, "Well, can you fix this?" Well, I can't go to their company and fix, you know, their their software for them. No, I mean, yeah. I could. Well, so you have, have uh, to pay me. You have uh, thirteen open issues on your GitHub. Yeah, and the, most of those aren't relevant. They're not relevant for the actual script. It's no. those all. Most of those things all come back to the fact that it was a grape shot. I don't remember who. Yeah, ended up hmm. what they're called now. But oh, um, I see you responded they, to this guy late last year. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just their issues with with their Linux client not working. Hmm. Uh, of course, if you want to go to our website, <laughs> infectionpodcast.com, you can join our server on Discord, and that's a better place to get a hold of me than GitHub or my blog, probably, <laughs> and because you can send a us a request. <laughs> you can do a pull request and ask for a response. <laughs> uh, but you can jump on there, and if you leave a message to us, either to Nick or I, or you can go into our news channel and drop a link in there for something that you th think might be uh, good for the show, something that you think we should talk about. And we review that before the live show starts. Uh, of course, we also have our ARC servers, 11 different ARC servers running in there, and a Conan Exile server that's been running. So hopefully, as you had a break over the holiday, you had a chance to jump on there and get some ARC or Conan Exiles. Uh, if you want to watch the show, you can do that through Twitch or YouTube. And of course, listening to the show, we record it, and then Nick uploads it after the fact, and that's all at the lower right-hand side. So whatever platform, device you want to listen on, we've got a lot of different ways to do that. If you are listening, that means oh, it, look at the lower right. Yeah, I added a new because our if you go back to the main page, tag. I put cloud. a new cloud of tag cloud because you get look like you can you can like move it, you can drag it around. Whoa! And, yeah, there you go. It's like a three D. Uh, but the other one was <laughs> it goes crazy. <laughs> there was something wrong with the other one, so I replaced it with this one, and, and it works. There you go. So we have a cloud uh, tag cloud on there. Um, and if you uh, if you go to the show notes. We have a video audio player built into there and then links for everything that we refer to throughout that live show. So perhaps there is, hey, this has got to be an old episode you're looking at. Episode 99. This is the last time we did tip of the week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we've got links for all the different things we talk about during there. Maybe there's a video that you want to see, but you were listening to the show. That's a perfect place to jump on and you can catch some of the video portions of the podcast without having to, to watch the whole thing. Uh, and then, of course, if you want to support the show, we got the support tag up top in the menu or infectionpodcast.com forward slash support. Yes, enough uh, tomfoolery here uh, as we uh, kick off the uh, new year. Um, Brian, we've got some, I don't want to use the word breaking news because I think that's overused. Um, we've got some uh, developing developing news as, uh, as we, as we come on the air tonight. Um, 
This is out just a couple of hours ago um, surrounding Microsoft and unfortunately yep. a very concerning push that we've seen in lots of other parts of the industry. The company that they bought back a couple of years ago, uh, ZeniMax, they have now got a union for their software testers. So this is yet another situation where a bu where QA testers have formed a union and now this is the first time that in Microsoft's 47 year history where they've ever recognized a union um they uh you know they I, some I, of the I swear it's because they know that they're going to be out the door soon enough so why not just give them a win <laughs> I mean it, it does get it, it does get pretty interesting um looking at some of the details over at uh, CNBC they bought Zenimax in uh, 2021 they spent 8 billion dollars on it. It was a very expensive purchase. Um they work with Activision. Um so they publish games like Doom, Fallout Quake, Elder Scrolls and stuff like that. So they they work with a whole bunch of different uh publishers. They're not really a developer, they're a publisher. So you have like groups like Activision Blizzard that make games or Bethesda that makes games and Zenimax publishes some of those. So those are some of the games that they've worked with. Um a uh, spokesperson for Microsoft and Zenimax said in an email, quote, in light of the results of a recent unionization vote, we recognize the, listen to this union, Communication Workers of America. I don't know how that's relevant to their video game testers, but the CWA. How are they communication workers? I have no idea. To me, communication workers are people that work for like cell phone companies or, uh, you know, cable companies or something like that would be communicate. I'm more of a communication worker than... <laughs> Yeah. Video game then these QA testers. <laughs> yeah, hey, just, but we just... use email. We're up with the technology here at the QA department. My we are voice, communication workers. My voice is literally modulated at 980 megahertz for you to listen to it. I am the definition of a communication worker. Nevertheless, uh, they recognize uh, them as a bargaining representative for quote quality assurance employees at Zenimax. So we look forward to engaging in good faith negotiations as we work towards a collective bargaining agreement, which we know, of course, if this union is like any of the others in the video game industry, Brian, it will not be done in good faith. It will be done with the idea yeah. of trying to destroy the company, to try and make ridiculous demands, and then bitch and complain when either you get fired or you don't get, or, or you just don't, or, or they just fire, they just they, they fire you, they don't sign your collective bargaining agreement, or they just stop working with you. Um, in this case, it's a Microsoft owned company. Now, um, I, I don't know what Microsoft's going to do with this. This seems like a disaster. Um, these unions yeah. suck. They don't do any, I, I've yet to see, I'm generally anti-union, uh, in general, but there's instances where yeah. you might be, where you could make a point that this thing needs a union or that thing needs a union. And I, and I, I can be open to that. I'm not. It's not one size fits all. I have yet to have anybody in any of these articles at Kotaku or IGN or PC Gamer. I've had I've yet to see any of these outlets tell me why a QA tester union is beneficial for me, the consumer. But what and about just, my reproductive I rights? I mean, it's not relevant I guess. to my QA testing. No, it's not. I hate to be, I hate to I hate to break it to you, Brian. I know we're only three days into the new year. I don't want to ruin your 2023, but I could give two shits about your thoughts on reproductive health care when you're QA testing Doom Eternal. It's yeah. just it's ludicrous. Well, there's another one that's that's actually going to be unionizing as well. Trying and this to, is yeah. uh, the Activision Blizzard owned developer Prolet Proletariat. Um, now, the interesting thing about this one is that they were acquired, or I think they were acquired just in the last month. And now, and then before the, everything is complete, like the everybody that works there decided to uh, unionize. And so it's Great. Just kind of a... <laughs> yeah, they agreed to be purchased. So they purchased a company to work on stuff. Um, and so this is the first one that's not QA testers, but you know, what happened is they, they, uh, it, news got out that they were going to be acquired and then they got approached to, uh, you know, to, and then got you know, talked into doing this before the, everything was complete. 
I so, wonder if that deal's going to fall apart now because I would assume that if you're in you're in a negotiation to purchase a company and all this and, and by the way let's just look at this one because I think this is a good example. I don't want to I'm not going to read the whole thing, but you know this is again the Communication Workers of America, this progressive activist union that that does all of this stuff. We are unionizing to protect this mission and to set the studio up for success. But about a next factor, Activision Blizzard, our progressive. Human first benefits such as a flexible PTO policy, remote work as a permanent option, and robust healthcare. So let's deconstruct those. Healthcare, you, healthcare. and insurance. Healthcare and insurance is fine. If you if your if your union is actually fighting for better health insurance, that doesn't bother me. That's something well, that a but, union but should. Well, but what fight. they consider healthcare is abortion rights. That's let's what they assume consider it's healthcare. Not. Let's just assume for this case okay. it's not. Let's, let's assume do, it's actually. Let's assume that they're going to do something different. Right. Let's yeah. give them one. Let's give them one little shred of legitimacy here. So okay, we start we'll with try. that. Robust Let's healthcare. Okay, fine. Remote work as a permanent option. How is that beneficial to the company? I understand how it's beneficial to you, so you can sit home all day, but how, how is that beneficial to the company? Okay, so and they're going to be working on... Okay, so this... Let's say that these were all QA workers. Sure, that might work because they're going to be testing World of Warcraft. These guys are, are doing World of Warcraft de uh, development. But what about for the people that are actually doing development where it doesn't make sense to do remote work uh, because they're using such large assets in doing editing and things like that, that there's situations where it just isn't convenient. You can't get the whole code base at your house or you can't get all of the assets at your house. And, and transmitting code base remotely creates a huge liability, especially for, for large projects like this. You know, it's easy for code to get leaked when they have to allow code to then go over a public network, the internet, to be able to get reach these people's homes. Mm. It's just, it, it's a bad situation. QA testing is one thing because screenshots leak, maybe versions of compiled code leak. But when you're trying to have someone do actual development and you're doing remote work, that creates a big legal quandary and, and a lot of extra security things that they try to implement to prevent big leaks from happening. And it's Plus just, it's not worth it for them. Well, and plus from a workflow standpoint, if you've got, you know, I, I look at a big studio, right, where you might have six or seven people working on something like map design. I would imagine from a workflow standpoint, having people not in the same location is a huge pain in the ass. Now, again, temporarily fine, but they want so you never have to go to the office again. All right. Flexible PTO. I Again, you know, you, you get your vacation time. If you have a deadline, you're not going to be able to take PTO, Brian. I, every industry is like that. I mean, my industry is like that. If there's a, for example, a couple of years ago, uh, a, a couple of my friends went out of the country for one of their birthdays. Their birthday happened to be in early November, happened to fall on election day. Guess what, Brian? Even though I had PTO time, I was I couldn't take it. I have to work on election day. It's literally part of my job. Like, it's just not even an option. So that I think is just ridiculous. Next up. Open and transparent communication over compensation and pushing to pay workers a thriving wage. I don't think we need to go much into that. The term, I don't know what a thriving wage is. How do you define that? If Better than competitive. For, well, yeah, but if you're working from home and you're living in an area where the median income is $12,000 a year, which is a, a, a lot of places in, or maybe a little higher than that, eighteen or $20,000 a year in you know, parts of the you know, central part of the country, if you want to work remotely from there, is it okay to pay you Twenty thousand dollars a year, but if you're living in yeah. San Francisco, you're worth a hundred and twenty. I'm just saying, like that. Th those, yeah. if you want to work from home, then maybe okay, fine. If that's how it works, then sure. If you live in an area where it doesn't cost a lot to live, then you get you get you make less. Problem solved. Okay. Yep. Um, clear, equitable, and actionable processes and resources for workers to obtain their career goals, such as professional development, paths to promotion, and raises. So again, more more about money. Um, which is all that yeah, which is I about. which that's fine if they, as long as it's create you know creating a process where it's clear. But your QA workers, you want to know what, how you get out of being a QA worker? Get a degree. Well, but there, yeah. but a majority of these are QA yeah. workers, and then there's a couple of non QA True. workers in the company that they've acquired. So you want to stop being a QA worker? Go get a degree. How about that? How about I them mean, apples? That's what a, <laughs> it's that easy. <laughs> Yeah. That's your path out of being a well, QA worker because you don't need a degree. You need a high school diploma, maybe, to be a QA worker. 
Well, here's the great news, Brian, with uh, President Joe Biden's student loan forgiveness program. You go to school for free and it'll be on uh, my dot, my dime. So that'll be great. Next oh, yeah, up, Brian, perfect. in an industry where deadlines and dates matter, overtime is never mandatory. That's great. Refusing doesn't affect performance evaluations and voluntary overtime has better pay and health protections. These people act like they're, you know, skydiving off of buildings and they're working on oil health rigs in the middle for overtime. <laughs> How do you give better game, health protections? At a video game company, Brian, we're not talking about oil remote, rigs in the Atlantic. Remote workers, too. <laughs> well, plus they're remote workers, right? So they're going to be remote workers, but then you have to approve, give them improved health protections. What does that even mean for a remote worker, improved health protections for working overtime? At a video game I company. Do, that does, I, do, I can't even understand what that even... You know, I can understand health protections if you're going to have somebody... Uh, maybe that's working on a skyscraper, walk, you know, and, and it's a dangerous situation, and you need to do something to make sure they don't fall asleep on the job. But they, yeah, they're 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 tr they are going to be testing World of Warcraft. I've stayed up many hours playing World of Warcraft. I've I've tested World of Warcraft more than any of these people that that work at this company. I promise you that. Uh, and you know, it hurt my health because I didn't sleep enough. I, I, but you know, what am I going to demand that they give me better health protections for playing World of Warcraft? Yes. It's just uh, insane. It's, I don't know what it even means. Next up, a transparent process by which management and workers can hold each other accountable without fear of retaliation to seek justice for all workers, especially those who hold marginalized identities. So this allows a minority who works in the company to try and get a manager fired for whatever reason. Just because, literally, because they're a minority, they have yeah. should be elevated to a place where they can get the CEO of the company fired or demand that the CEO do something with no pushback or no backlash. The entry level employee that might that checks the boxes should be allowed to run the company. That's their second to last demand. And then finally, our culture and policies prioritize DEI, which is diversity, equity, and inclusion, yeah, in exactly. every level of decision making and support underrepresented groups. So we can build the most diverse and equitable triple A game studio in the country. Jesus Christ. So this you're, is so your, your, your sexual choice, uh, you know, what you choose, the sexual partner that you choose or how you choose to, uh, you know, show yourself as far as I want to wear women's clothing. I want to wear women's makeup. I want to cut off my penis and turn it into a vagina and go to work. <laughs> That's supposed to all be relevant. The most relevant thing towards my employment at your company. Yes. That. Correct. Why? I mean, not <laughs> the fact that I have a degree in programming, not that I have experience in game development. None of these things matter more than the fact that I am not a straight white male who wants to work at your company. I, I mean, just... I have kids. Is that, a, is that a deal breaker? Can I not work there now? Um, no. No. Well, you know, what color are your I, I'm kids? the man of the house. Uh, I have one who's one eighth Native American. That now it didn't work. Well, it did work for Elizabeth. Warren, not a, so no. maybe. Well, I mean, I don't know. She's like one three hundredth or something. Have she's, you been seeing the news? Have you been seeing all the news lately of all these people that are getting busted because they're supposed to be like big figures in Native American, uh, you know, rights and everything? And and like, there's one from the '60s, and and her sisters turned on her. Were like, she's not Native American at all, but she's been like the poster child of Native American. And then there's another one recently. They showed another one, and it's like this is a white girl who puts on makeup to look Native American, and then goes stands for Native American rights and pretends that she is. Well, it's I been mean, happening that's, left and right lately. Well, that's literally yeah. I mean, so that's that's the current state of this, and and, I, and we bring and I bring this up here, Brian. That, you know, we bring this up today because and this is this is. This is what they publish. This is what they put on their Twitter account. Like this is not. No, they're not some, ashamed of this at all. It's not even that they're not ashamed. This is, they think this is good, and you look at the comments, and it's just like it, it, everybody's just you know, like everybody's just you know foaming at the mouth over how amazing this is. And I just I look at this, and I don't see anything in here that makes the industry better. I don't see anything in here that it, that empowers. Nothing in here is empowering an employee to do anything. This is strictly yeah. to hold the company hostage. 
Yep. That's what it's all a communi- of these... It's a communist tactic. Yes. Uh, I mean, if you look at my background, this is from 1984. You know, it, it's it's kind of, of war is peace, freedom is slavery, ignorance is strength. Um, you know, and you it, are the resistance, of- and you're listening to Alex <laughs> John. <laughs> and, you know, it, it's just, it's a perfect culmination of this is them pushing for communism in America, because you look at how they kind of, a lot of these things happen is, oh, workers' rights and all of this, and, but... What are they really protecting? It has very little to do with the actual worker, the the average person, the average American that wants to go to work to support their family. It comes down to all these political things, nothing to do with the actual bringing the bread home to the company, to the family, right from the company. Well, and for some reason, and and that's that right there is the um, that right there is the problem when you bring up the idea that. Some, that your work betters the company that you work for, these people immediately lose it because they can't comprehend the idea that somebody else is profiting off of your work even though they employ you. They're paying you to do work and they profit off of it. And the ways that they pay you yep. is because they can profit off it. It's a cycle. They can profit, they pay you, you produce, they profit. It's a cycle. It's part of the cycle. They can't comprehend that. So when you bring that up, Ryan, they just lose their mind. Well, and uh, here I've, I've got the representation data for Activision Blizzard. They released it for 2021. I don't know if you've had a chance to look at this, but it, the, you know, if you look at, they say that women account for 24% of the workforce at Activision Blizzard. Um, underrepresented ethnic groups represents 36% of the publisher as a whole. As a whole, one thing that you know, these are. Unrepresented, underrepresented ethnic groups. A lot of times, are these are people that are, for instance, the black community. What's that? Five or six percent of the United States. I'm trying to remember what the percentage is. Something um, like that. But something like that. But you know, these groups together, they make thirty percent of the company's employees. It says it's it's UEGs are defined as multiracial and are a non-white identifying employee within the U.S. So they're rep they're saying we have a non thirty six percent non-white workforce and they're they're posting that as something they're proud of which well, of in itself just just seems racist to me the fact that you're like hey look we don't have a lot of white people here you know compared to other places look at us weren't we special i just um, it, they I, said I just, that 29 percent of the company's hires were women and the 40 percent of their hires in 2021 were were the were non-white people I just really struggle with this whole thing because I just I, I fail to see the relevance. And I know some folks will say, specifically those on the left, will say, "Well, I don't see the relevance because I'm, you know, Brian, you and I are the, you, know, you and I are the devil, right? We're the uh, heterosexual white male. So well, of course we don't see it. I just I look at all of this data and I look at all these things and I just don't I just don't see it. Um, yeah. I I just don't see the relevance. I don't I don't see how this empowers anybody i don't see how this makes anything better for anybody i don't know how i just i i, I fail to see any of it to me it seems like oh uh, it to me it, it seems like which is exactly what it is it's a virtue signal this is a yeah. pat ourselves on the back because we did a good job even though we even though it it, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean anything to me at least it just well, it just doesn't seem like it does i, I don't know and the thing is, like, their goal is to have over a one third representation of women by the end of twenty twenty five. Why though? So, like, what, well, like, what, what would that give you? That's my question. Like, if I said, Brian, our goal was to have a million listeners by the end of this year, we'd have to, you know, there, you know, how, how do we get to that? Why are we doing so, that? There's got to be a reason. So Ross, just, I don't understand. Ross has updated. It's thirteen point six of our of our nation is black. So. Okay. Um, and so that, if you take that or Hispanic, which is considered white, right? I think in these, I don't think Hispanic is considered in the underrepresented groups, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, you know, they usually will say white and then you check another box that says not Hispanic. Um, so this is mostly, it could, I don't know if Asians would be included in this as well, probably. But if you add add these up, I mean, their goal is just not is to have as many other cultures, which is fine. But the problem is, what's the percentage of people applying at your company with these various groups? How many people that are fully qualified that deserve the job just as much as anyone else are being turned away, so that you can hire someone based on a, a you know one of these other criteria that aren't relevant for their actual job? 
Uh, that's my concern. I don't care. You can have whatever. It sh- you know, it shouldn't matter what the ratio ends up being. You should hire people that are qualified for your company to improve your product, to improve your workforce, maybe to maybe even improve the atmosphere. You know, hire based on how how good of a worker are they? How much do they uplift the workers around them? You know, are they are they is there controversy with this worker when they are around other people? Like those are the things you should look at to make it so you have a good, healthy, diverse workforce when it comes to thought. Uh, and it shouldn't be that this person's a woman, so therefore they're more qualified than this other person. This person is a UEG, so therefore they're more qualified than the other person. I don't. I just don't see that. Um, the, the, here, they make a note. The report explains that at this time, it hasn't included employees' gender selections of other or non-binary, but it plans to do so in the future. So in the future years, we'll get to see what, how, what their goals are for non-binary, which what does that have to do with your actual <sighs> employment? So what, exhausting. Saying that you're non-binary, saying that you don't feel like your gender is, you know, matches whatever, anything. What's that have to do with you working at Activision Blizzard? That's what I don't get. I, I don't I don't get much of it. Um, that's uh, that's what we're tracking today with these with these two stories. And uh, there's one is surrounding Microsoft, the other Activision Blizzard King, which uh, you know could soon eventually become Microsoft. If, if I were Activision Blizzard, I would absorb this company, just shut it down. And then <laughs> and then you just knock all these people out of their job because that's that's kind of what they've asked for, unfortunately. Um, so we'll uh, we'll continue yep. to uh, to keep an eye on those stories. Um, all right, Brian, we got a lot here in the notes. Um, where do we go from the from that topic or topics? All right. Um, how about let's talk about Riot for a minute? Is this sure. kind of this kind of China news? Um, Riot is suing Netties, which I've talked about this before, but it was with a mobile game. Uh, I don't, whatever, bang, bang. Remember when I talked about that that mobile yes. game? Oh, well, now they're getting sued because they seem to be making cl- uh, clones of Riot's games and selling them in China, which... A Chinese th- company th- is <laughs> stealing intellectual property and just... I just can't it? imagine. But the problem is when, when China then bought Riot, now they're pissed. <laughs> they're like, we're stealing from ourselves. This is horrible. And so they have now made a, cl- a clone of a, val- a Valorant. <laughs> And they're they're upset about it, and, you know. But of course, Riot it didn't have any issues with all these other companies who were getting copied by China until they got purchased by China. And then now, as China, they're saying this is unfair what you're doing to us, China. It, you know, why doesn't the management who's overseeing the, from the Chinese government go and talk to the other one and say, "Hey, yeah, <laughs> it's you, <laughs> this guy." You know, uh, uh, why doesn't Riot now? I mean, because. The problem is Riot has some companies in the United States, so they can't just go steal because they might get sued in the United States. Yeah. But because both their parent companies are in China, now they're like, they tried to sue the United States version of all of this. And they're like, well, you're both Chinese companies. You got to go sue each other over there. And they're like, oh, yeah. well, we're screwed. Yeah. We're we fighting Chinese going court. nowhere. Yeah. We do. Yeah. What are they going to say? Oh, okay. Well, you know, you you give all your, give all your proceeds to the Chinese government anyway. So then you'll be happy. Uh, so. Wow. They're, 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 everything has been pretty much mirrored. They, they make games that feel the same, character flows are the same, just everything is the same. Uh, and, you know, that's, and even, yeah, even, even the graphics. You look and see the, the way that the characters stand, the way that the, the outfits work, uh, you know, the way that the games work. Everything is just about the same. Hyperfront? Let's see. Hyper, yeah, Hyperfront. I wonder if anybody's done a... Uh... Side by side video or yeah, something. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm. I'm wondering if somebody's done a. Uh, let's see. Here's a here's a random, random YouTube video. Let's see. Uh, kind of what it looks like. I mean, I. It's kind of hard to tell with the comparison side by side. I'm sure direct. I'm sure cer- certain screenshots look look better than others. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's kind of playing through the gameplay. Yeah. They're um, looking at some of the demos, but it looks like the abilities and the way that some of the things operate, yeah, the are, weapons are work are about the here. same. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I mean, they have slightly different weapon effects, but other than that, <laughs> they're the same thing. 
Interesting. So yeah, so there's another case they're trying to sue. Um, one interesting thing, I was just going to mention this, Riot has put all of their things on the Xbox Game Pass. Hmm. Now, League of Legends, if you look at how League of Legends work, you remember they have, it seemed like a hundred or more different characters that you unlocked as you played. Yeah. One interesting thing about this now is that when on the Game Pass, all those characters are unlocked. When you're on when you play the Game Pass version, you have access to all the characters, which I was kind of surprised about because that's like it's kind of the point of the whole game. At least for me, when I played MOBAs and things like this, part of the, the and I guess even in Raid, you know, I play Raid. Part of it is unlocking the characters. That's that is the game, you know, and then getting gear on the characters. Yeah. This is a little bit different because the games doesn't really change based on gear but part of what i got out of mobas was leveling up and unlocking characters and then taking time to learn their abilities and that was part of the, the tier system of what it was but if you play they have their pc and mobile titles all on the game pass so league of legends and valorant um things like that uh, so and and they're all unlocked so i guess that you know if, if you were playing and you have the game pass make sure it's linked to that because then you'll have access to the hundred and whatever characters that are available. All right. Well, I guess, uh, that's something new. Yeah. I wasn't, wasn't familiar with that. Hmm. Yeah. And so if you, if you do play any of those, uh, all right, let's talk about, let's talk about Roblox. Cause we haven't talked about Roblox for a little Big while. I know Roblox, that you love yeah. Roblox. Oh, uh, before we do that, uh, I want to thank our friend, uh, UGX vibe for hitting us up with the 59, month resubscription he, wow. he makes a, a mean comment about your prior segment known as tip of the week brian and calling that a <laughs> some sort of phallic segment uh, that, that you were doing oh, yeah. so, so, so thank you very uh, much it, it just got it, it got out of control with yeah. it, so. <laughs> uh, really appreciate it. one thing in december they had a report come out that roblox had over 56 million day, daily players last month oh my god so <laughs> people are playing roblox uh and and this is something that we don't. As I said, we don't let our kids play Roblox. Uh, we even have a course where, like, one of our kids has been learning how to make Minecraft mods. They have oh, a course nice. on Roblox, how to how to make Roblox. Uh -huh. uh, but we won't let him use that. You know, I'm not going to have him making mods and something that he can't use. Um, but you know, this is something where this game just keeps on growing. Like the guy who made it, whatever this marketing model is, is working. Um, their it's estimated a, revenue in November alone was 190 million. What's so weird about Roblox? And I will admit, I am not the. I, I've never. Have we? Tr did we ever play for Game of the Week? I don't remember if we did or didn't. I'm not sure that we did. I, I don't, don't know if I've we ever played Rob. I don't think we played Roblox. I don't. Then remember. I've never played it. If I ever played it, it would have been because we did it as a joke, and I don't think we ever did. We played that other one that was kind of like Roblox that you had us play. Um, yeah, that I don't remember, but that wasn't Roblox. Um, but but in this, so this, people can make game modes, you know, and, and you can program yeah. in it and things like that. But the problem is, is it is not locked down. <laughs> What's so you can make a game mode and have though, porn in there, all kinds of stuff. What what is so odd is that it's not really marketed. At least I don't see it marketed. Do you see commercials on television for Roblox? I I mean I don't, I don't know. I don't watch television and get ads, <laughs> so. Um, I don't, but I don't see it. They like, have partnered with Walmart. Like they have a bunch yeah, of products at Walmart. They do. Um, so they you have go the, there and get shirts that say Roblox. You can yep. get. So I guess maybe that's the toy department. And, yeah, I guess and maybe that's the. I'm not an expert in you know like child marketing. Um, and maybe it is like figurines and stuff like that. Maybe that is how you market the game. I would assume it's the other way around. Like you play the game and then you want the the merchandise, but somehow. They've got all these players. Maybe it's, it seems to me, Brian, at least from my vantage point, it's short. It's a lot of, it's all organic. I mean, I remember back yeah. when I was younger, um, it was, um, oh God, what was the game? You were too old for it. You bought the stuffed animals and they had a code on them. Um, uh, a webkins. That was that was that. Oh, it was yeah, these I little. Never, it was it was know. the it was these animals, and they had a code on it, and you put the code in on the website, and you got it as a character. Um, in the game, I in the in the the game was buying these things and then putting the code in online, and then you got it. Um, it's pretty much raid, except for what, probably a lot cheaper. 
Yeah, well, no, the, well, these were like physical stuffed animals. These things were like thirty or forty bucks. Um, like uh, like zoo coin. Yeah, I'm not. I don't know, but pr- probably. Um, so I guess it, it's just kind of weird how the how in in a younger circle the it's like you don't really have to market it. You just need a bunch of people playing it, and then everybody wants to play it because all of their friends are playing. It's just a really yeah. It's just and they have so robux different. in here, which is like is like V bucks in my, in uh, Fortnite. And I think people can get somehow get Robux from people inside of their own private servers. So if you can set up program in a fun game mode, you can get a way to actually make money. This is their website. Of this as a kid. This is their homepage. Yeah. This isn't even a web. Like it's literally a lot of sign up forms. Yep. It's just bizarre to me. And obviously it's, you can see it's on all these different platforms. Um, I just find I find the story and the details about Roblox. Maybe that's an episode we need to do uh, in the next couple of months. Is do kind of a deep dive into how I just I don't understand how it's got such a big user base and predominantly how it got a, so popular. A, a, it's such a and a young user base too. I mean, you're talking. I don't know what the average age for Roblox is, but I would assume it's in the early teens, twelve, thirteen, fourteen years old. The average age. Maybe it's a li- maybe a little bit older than that. So I, I don't know how you have sixty million active players in that user base. That's bizarre to me. Yeah. Yeah, and and it's it, you know because our kids when when my wife and I first met, they were playing a little bit of Roblox, and then once it kind of apparent, got apparent what it was, then it was like no more. But yeah, they they love the little stupid game modes they play. They have one where they run a car dealership, and it, the graphics are horrible. The mechanics of is you know some kids making this game mode the things barely work but these kids are sitting there playing these mindless games over and over again but they're playing like with their friends too to th- yeah oh yeah or they're or they're pl- playing on their games their friend's server things like that i found a, an article that talks about they call this the criminal underworld of roblox where kids Ooh. are scamming kids Oh, absolutely. And uh, I, I scammed kids back there, on Xbox Live in the day. So, I mean, I don't have much room to talk. There's there's a video, that <laughs> a 15 or 14 minute video that goes along with it if people are interested. Uh, but this talks about, you know, for instance, things where kids are scripting pin crackers um, <laughs> and they can do that and it'll auto unverify emails. Jesus. Um, so it makes it so they get logged off and then they change everything on, on their account, steal their Robux, which, like this guy said, he was able to steal 467,985 Robux from wallets, in the, which is about $5,850. This guy's a half. scumbag. <laughs> Why would you admit yeah. that? Uh, and, you know, these people, they're coming up with ways of creating scripts to just steal from other kids. Um, you know, this is the kind of stuff. 13 year olds you know they're scam they're scamming 13 year olds out of their parents money is really what it comes down to and then you know these kids are buying new video cards and things like that with the money that they steal why you know why we need that in roblox i don't know because the graphics aren't quite that great no but 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 it's very much it's the it's the gary's mod model it's the it's the sandbox open yep. world model but they've done it for a generate for they've done it for an age according to this article um the average age according to uh data from september of 2020 according to roblox 29 percent of their user bases is between 9 and 12 years old yeah. And it just seems like, I don't know, like if you're going to make a game mode, like make it for this because he, if you put a little bit of time and effort into it, it seems like what you make is better than what these 13 year olds are making. Now, I don't, but the thing is, they're making yeah, stuff see, that they find interesting that I do not find interesting. That's the problem. That's it's one mindless. part of it. That's one part of it. And the second part of it is you've got an entrenched user base. And that's. Like yeah. the games that are the most popular are not always the best mechanically. H one Z one is a great example of a game that was popular that was dog shit, but because it had yep. people playing it and podcasts that spawned out a bunch of idiots doing podcasts about it, it was it was popular. Yep. It wasn't the best zombie game on the market by a by a, by a, by any in literally any metric. It was not the best zombie game on the market, but it had the yeah, biggest. The graphics base. were were horrible. <laughs> the the mechan- the 
code for the net code for moving around was horrible. I mean, list off all the things that you view. Here's the checklist of an awesome video game. <laughs> yeah, I and, know. you know, I, I don't I, I don't know that it hit any of the check marks, but people enjoyed playing it. Um, um, here, yeah, Mag- here's Magpie93 says, yeah, my niece plays Roblox and she's eight. She got into it watching YouTubers playing it. Oh, and it's all I tor- targeted towards younger that. users. Kids. That's it. Yep. It's the YouTubers, YouTubers the VTubers, and the YouTubers. I didn't even. What an idiot. That's exactly it. Yeah, they watch it. And especially on, um, I would assume a lot of this Roblox content is on, um, was it YouTube Kids? Is that where you can like lock down a device? Yeah, I'm sure YouTube Kids. It, you can tag it as, as kids friendly and, and have a certain Which I'm sure criteria it is. that you meet. And then it'll show up on YouTube Kids. Uh, there, there's a YouTuber called Unspeakable that our kids used. To, I mean, we don't let him on YouTube anymore, but they used to watch this guy. And, you know, he's a guy in his early 20s, probably just sitting there and it just it just it's like nails on a chalkboard to me the way that he's talking because it's all so fake. But he's like, oh, I'm going to run here. And I'm going to do this now. Oh, this is crazy. So scary. You know, but he's tailoring everything that he's doing to what these kids are like. He's the coolest He's so cool. I'm like, this guy, is, I mean, I'm sure he could be a nice person in real life, but the biggest loser I've ever seen <laughs> oh hanging God. out at his home. But, you know, I'm saying he, he's making a lot of money. So uh, what's, his, what's the guy's him. name? Uh, unspeakable. And, and the thing is, is but he, he's he got him and a bunch of his 20-something-year-old friends making the YouTube videos for 13-year-olds. Oh, my God. He's got 15 million subscribers? Yes. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, is like listening to it, it's like this guy has no life. But you know what? He when the when the video goes off, I'm sure he's got he's walking into a mansion. He's he's got he's driving a nice sports car. But the thing is, when when he's on that video, like he is he knows his audience. And he and his friends are they're you know, they're not saying any real customers, they're basically saying, Oh gosh darn it, you uh, and it's just it's just it's just See, crazy to listen to. This is interesting. This guy's only had a YouTube channel since 2016, according to Social Blade. Yeah. He's got 8 billion yeah. views, and yes. they estimate his net, his uh, monthly earn, his uh, his monthly earnings about $250,000, $350,000 a month. Yes. He'll He's go adding- into Roblox. He'll yeah. pick random game modes of the servers that people have made, and he'll go in there with his friends, and they'll play around and just act stupid, and these kids love it. <laughs> they just sit and watch it, and they're like, oh, he's so cool. Oh, he did this. I can't believe he did that in Roblox. Okay, yeah, <laughs> I can't believe he did that either. It's pretty crazy. He ran around, and he fell off the edge of a cliff and fell you know, down. Brian, I mean, it was amazing. Brian, Brian. I have I have to stop yeah. you. You are being a boomer and I you are I literally know, being a quintessential boomer it. as we speak. Oh wow, he did that in Roblox. How cool. <laughs> but Magpie and uh Big Woody Sauce make an interesting point. How is this any different than shows like The Wiggles and things like that that are that are oh, yeah. shows that are made for kids? And I guess the answer is they're really not except this is a video game. They they're, they're the Wiggles was a television show produced for kids. These are YouTubers yeah. that are playing a video game that is causing more people to play the video game. It's kind of weird. It's yeah. like they're the middleman almost between the game and the and the user base. It's very odd. But it's very successful, well, it, obviously. This guy uh, only has yeah. 700 I mean, videos. That's not that yeah. many to have 15 million subscribers. That's but for some reason. For some reason, the kids love these videos, and it's it, it's I don't know if it's his the way he talks, but they just think he's the coolest guy in the world. But as an adult, when you listen to him, you're like, this guy just is sounding like the biggest douche I've ever heard. And if this, but the problem is, it, it, but he could be a tool. I'm not saying he's, he is, but you know the, the persona that he puts off just drives my wife and I crazy. This is his most recent him. video, spending a million dollars filling my house with packing peanuts. And you can see this is a very nice Yeah, house. and then they say, <laughs> but can you play a little audio? Can you make it so you can hear it? Let me, will that get a strike or something? Uh, you just play like, uh, oh, just oh, to don't. hear the way that they talk. <laughs> no! I lost. Hey, watch this spike. <laughs> oh. 
The music. Yeah, do you, do you understand? <laughs> did I do it? Yes, do you understand? You did, you did not do it. Now to play some volleyball. <laughs> this is his home. Loser has to dress as Darla from Finding Nemo. <laughs> yeah. One more point, baby. Kids love this. I don't get it. But, I do uh, well, not. I, I, under, I understand why a kid loves that because it's sensational. And it's, again, it's... it's. I know, um, but as men, as men sitting there doing that, like, Brian, I just... This guy's making I would a struggle. quarter of a million Money, dollars a yeah. month. Right out I the window. Quarter Brian, of a million a month. Here I, we go. I tell you this. If you, and if you say... That if, you, if you don't tell me the truth here, I'm going to know you're a liar. If somebody would pay you half a million dollars a month to do this bullshit, you would do it in a heartbeat. Yeah, because I'd probably in my mind be like, I make, I'm make, i bringing joy to these kids. I'm going to bring them clean entertainment. Because no, if you, you look at what they're you doing, know what I would be like, clean I'd be like, you'd be like, money, show money, me the money. 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 <laughs> yeah, I'd be like Mr. Krabs over here with counting my. But I'm saying coins, in my mind, I would duck, just. Diving in my <laughs> pool of gold coins. That's what I'd be like. But the thing is, in my mind, I'd be justifying it as, okay, look at all the schmutt and everything else that's crazy out there. True. These, they're bringing them good you know, knee-jerk entertainment. Like, if you look, they're acting in ways, they're not sitting there drinking a beer and, and you know, and, and making crude jokes. They're acting like kids, but they're adults. And, and His, and, his know, most popular the way video they talk. has 70 million views. Yeah. What's it about? It's actually about riding a hoverboard around his house and not in choosing the right door yeah and the thing is they never they they never cuss i mean is he is he doing is he riding a hoverboard in uh roblox or in real life no, okay so he's, he's <laughs> no, riding, riding in, in his life. house yeah he's like playing like a, some weird like roblox mini game weird in game. real life yeah, yeah hmm. but, i mean total marketing I mean, if you look at this guy it, he's all about it He's yeah, doing, look at he's, the, he's got the shirts made with the logos. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's, he's brought rocking. in his he's brought in his friends who are like, dude, I'll do this, you know, for a, a nice little paycheck. Yeah, absolutely. Um, look at they and, got a toaster. And they all look, play a ukulele, yeah, a toaster, a ukulele. <laughs> I mean, you know, he's made he's made tens of thousands of dollars off this video and minimal he, input. Hundreds of thousands. The video's got seventy million oh, views on YouTube. Oh, that one. Okay, so hundreds of thousands of dollars of, uh, off of that. And his friends, he's probably given a cut of it for being a part of it. And, you know, so they're all in. They're, they're, nobody cusses on the stream. You know, they maintain that fake, happy, um, silly persona. Because I can promise you that's not what they're all really like if you sat down and were hanging out with them in real life. Oh, but see, he's even got, he goes further. Check this out. So he's got, he's got a game website. And these things are, they're in browser Unity games. Oh, so he's got to make some sort of a cut from this too. He's got imposter. Yeah. Huh. And then he probably wow. shows ads. Yeah. So he's making more money off the ads. He gets his kids it, to come here, and it's a place that you can send your kids to play games yep. where you know there's not going to be any smut. And they can right? buy. There's T-shirts, and look, there's all this little stuff, which is again, all none of this is like, yeah, you know, like phallic or anything. This is all just like things that would appeal to twelve Healthy. year olds. Yeah. Hmm. This yeah. is this is genius. I know, and and yeah, unspeakable. My kids. Oh my god! Look at this! Look brought at this! Him up last week, he's doing a live show at Houston's Toyota Center. Where is that? He and his two friends. Is he selling it? Is look, it he's a, doing it at a yeah, it's in an arena. Arena. Wow. He's selling out an arena so Holy they can come, moly. and all he does is sit there and just be goofy. He, I mean, he doesn't do stand-up comedy. He just talks goofy and acts goofy. I mean, what what he's going to do in his live show, I have no idea. Other than maybe gonna answer questions. Ball pits, foam pits. It's going to be a show. Yeah. That's just crazy. These tickets are outrageous. How much are they charging? $175 for the sex, this section. Oh, my God. There it's more expensive go. than going to a football game. Yeah. I mean, you could go, you could go listen to venue. a concert. Yeah, listen to a concert of somebody singing and shit. Or you can go watch and speak a little bit goofy. And you, uh, you have, these kids and will be begging to do it. The kids will be begging to do it. There's virtual tickets, too, to watch the live stream. It's $25.
Yeah. This guy, this guy is a he's freaking good at, he's good at marketing. Yeah. Good at marketing. Holy yep. mo, this this is uh, blowing my mind a little bit. <laughs> Brian, <laughs> hey, I found a new, new direction for the show. We couldn't go to PAX the last couple of years. You think we should take our PAX money and go to Houston January 21st and check this guy out? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could go, we go learn something from him. Yeah. Next, we'll have a ball pit and, and goofy games on the show instead. And, and then next, hey, then Nick, it's golly gee, that, that, that was crazy. Hot, then it's the hot tub and it's just real. It's just all, it's just all downhill from there. <laughs> yeah, Mag, Magpie, he's figured it out. <laughs> We're gonna come on and we all be totally change the direction on for the show and see if we can make a million dollars. This is remarkable. All what, right, what were we even talking about? <laughs> no, but, but Roblox. Oh, Roblox. Yeah, Roblox. I forgot. Yes, of course. Okay, great. Yeah. So, hmm. um, wow. Uh, where do you go from there? Okay, what? One more thing, just sure. to, before we leave, because we're getting close to the end. Yeah, of the we got show. about ten minutes. Sure. Okay. Here. Uh, one thing, a Twitch streamer, Pokimane, is wanting oh. tougher laws on revenge porn. Now, I don't, I'm I don't sure know why. <laughs> oh, I, yeah, I can imagine <laughs> why. Um, you know, because first of all, non-consensual nudes. I, one thing I can tell you is nobody has nude pictures of me to put to give non-consensual nudes. Well, put them speak on for the internet. Well, not that you're aware of, Brian. Well, I mean, not everybody, <laughs> yeah. but. But you know, say like uh, first of all, I, I I don't think that people should be posting pictures of un, with no consent, you know, on the of internet. Course. But how did you get all these you know non consensual nudes out on the internet to uh, to have them be but then be posted to public sites where you're now embarrassed? Now, now I don't know a lot about Pokimane, but there's a lot of female streamers out there that are putting sending private nudes to people for money. Um, yep, are those considered? non-consensual nudes if they then get posted on a public uh, website even though you're selling them to people for money i mean it'd be more of a copyright infringement i would think than than a revenge porn incident yeah ross has been doing topless streams for years he says yeah. it's not been helping his views no, whatsoever it, it got him banned actually he, he has sent me on, non-consensual nudes i mean it, come on it, it did get him on tosh.0 i mean that that is true <laughs> um but you know w one of the things with this though that, that that's tough is you know you can go after these people after the fact the the the, the i assume the question is though um how do you stop this from happening in the first place? And the answer is there's no amount of legislation that will stop this. It's the Barbra Streisand. No. You can't. Once it's posted, it's not going away. So you can make the well, laws. She said, Go she said it should be illegal to possess nudes without their owner's consent. Yeah, which but means if I legally send a nude to somebody and then that person shares it, then that person, what are they? They're now breaking the law. Well, They're treating well, it like software. Well, yeah, but the question is, is you know, can you revoke that at any time? So if I send them to you and then I decide I don't like you anymore, now all of a sudden you're in possession of these pictures and I'm gonna, you know, go to the police and report you. I mean that that that's it's a very very much very much a, a gray area with this. Is uh, you know, at the time it was obviously consensual. Do you have the right to revoke that at any point? Legally, yeah. the answer is technically no. Um, no. The, the answer is no. Well, and did someone... I, I, is she making them sign NDAs to be able to access the private videos? Now, now I'm not saying she's doing this because I don't know anything about Pokemon. Well, let's say some of the ones that we know, like what, Amaranth, that have yeah. been sending all of these pictures and things like that. Are they making them sign NDAs to say you're not allowed to share any of this information that I send you privately with anyone else? Because if they're not, then them saying, hey, look at this picture I got of Amaranth or printing out a picture of Amaranth and keeping it on their wall of their home. <laughs> is that illegal? Because you then letting someone else see that picture who didn't sign, you know, have consent to be able to see it. OK, where's the where's the broken law here? I agree with you, and it seems like this is more of a copyright issue than anything else. That that's yeah. to me more with They're this copyright. Is, but, Unless but, someone illegally got a a, video, a picture of you, then that's a whole other law to itself. And or you, it was a person you had an intimate relationship who, in a private moment, took a picture. 
that has its own law protections, not ones that you send to people on the internet for money. And we, one thing we know is that copyright law is, and, and that whole process is very, very slow. That is not a quick process Mm -hmm. by any stretch. Now there is that, did, did, there is the DMCA, the the Millennial Copyright Act, where you know, like things get pulled off YouTube from D, from uh, DMCA, but that's traditionally television and movies that 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 kind of yep. falls into. I'm not sure, and I don't know if that stuff can be uh, used in in that side as well. Um, yeah, you know, I I don't disagree with her her statement as to what she wants tougher laws on, um, but. I think there's needs to be a lot. There needs to be some more definition in here as to what exactly that means. What the difference is. Yeah, yeah exactly. She says at the very, or they say at the very end of this article, you know, if an ex shares nudes with someone, that person should be, uh, should be so scared of having the photos because that person who, whose photo they have didn't consent to giving it, consent to giving it to them. And that's kind of the situation where if you're in a relationship with somebody, I think it is illegal to already then share photos that were privately shared with you in that manner. I think that already is illegal. I don't think that's something you're allowed to do. Maybe I'm wrong. You know, maybe it's a state by state thing. But you know, this is that is that's your worry. That's that is not just online. <laughs> that's a worry uh, in general. Like, yeah. it, it, there's also things that you say and do with your partner that you don't want posted on Facebook, on Twitter. Uh, you know, just even words or, or you know. Uh, all kinds of things. Yeah. Right. That's, that's a real fear. Uh, a lot of that comes down to be wise about who you date. Don't date sleaze balls. Cause guess what hey. sleaze balls do? Sleazy things. <laughs> Don't talk about me like that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, if, if it's the type of person who, when, you know, if, they, if they'll sit there and talk trash about their ex and be like, look at all this embarrassing thing about them. Look at that embarrassing. Thing. Well, maybe you should be, you should be scared, <laughs> you know, Pick someone that doesn't do that sort of thing. Pick someone who uh, is, you know, even though they don't like the person anymore, is respectful of them. Well, I so don't. Guess typically- what? If you're not with them anymore, they will be. I don't typically agree with Kutaku commenters, Brian. I, I know that's not a that's not a, the wildest take I've ever had, but there are a couple. There are a lot of people in the comments here, you know, saying that like everything else that we see now. This is a failure from a parenting standpoint. We're not talking about yeah. people in their late 20s doing this. We're talking about l- literally barely legal 18 and 19 year olds that are falling into this stuff. Yep. And it's because of. I bet you there's plenty of high schoolers and even junior hires doing the same thing. Yeah, I which mean, is a whole nother, that's a are, whole nother clan of worms. That I'm glad our kids aren't in public into. school because of all the things that, you know, they've said, you know, people sending pictures. We, oh, we sure. lock down their phones. But just imagine all of what would be considered child porn going back and forth um, just because kids are sharing photos because the sensitivity to that has gone down. The oversight of that has gone down. Parents are letting their kids get away with things. And, you know, as we talked about before, then getting mad at the companies for what their kids are doing. You know, you're letting my kid do this. No, you, the parent, are letting your kid do this. They're facilitating this application or this software or this device to do it. But you're the one letting them do that. Like, be a parent. Quit letting your kids take pictures and send them to other people in compromising situations or trying to make themselves seem older than they are. Like, as a parent, monitor what your kids are doing. It's not up to the social media platform to do that. Be a parent. That is the uh, line of the night. Well, Brian, I uh, did not believe that that was where our conversation was going tonight, but (laughs) that's uh, how it goes. That's how she, to quote, um, uh, to quote the the late great Mr. Leahy from uh, everybody's favorite program, uh, Trailer Park Boys, that's how she goes, bud. So uh, that's uh, that's <laughs> <laughs> that, that's how she goes in this uh, in this case. Um, yeah. Brian, where can uh, where can people find you on the uh, the good old internet? All right. Well, if you want to find me on Twitter, it's at Boise Computer. Of course, at Brian Aldridge on Gab, Parlor, Getter, Truth Social, or you can check out my blog, BiteOfTech.com. Some contact forms on there. If you want to get us on Discord, though, go to our website, uh, infectionpodcast.com, and on the upper right-hand side, you can click Join Our Server on Discord. Uh, that makes it so where you can message Nick or I or uh, the whole podcast group as a whole. Uh, also, there's a news channel in there. If you want to post a link to something that you think might be relevant for the show, just post a link in there, and we'll review it before the live show, and very good chance it could become a part of what we discuss. 
Uh, if you want to watch the video form, actually, one thing, also the Ark and uh, Conan Exile servers. We have 11 Ark servers running, all different maps, all connected, and then a Conan Exile server that's been running for now a month or two. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and jump in. We have links for that in various channels. Uh, if you want to watch the video form of the podcast, go to Twitch or YouTube or the audio form is the lower right-hand side. A lot of different platforms and ways to listen. Uh, of course, those are not live, but they are recorded and then uploaded after the, fa- after the fact. And so if we are doing that, that means we've also uploaded the show notes. We have a video, video and audio player built into that and then links for everything that we discuss throughout the live show. So if you want to follow along, maybe you're listening to the podcast form, but then we showed a video uh, that you want to go and check out. Just go in there and we'll have a link for that video and you can go watch it on your own time. Um, and also sometimes more material than what we discuss. Source material, things that we may not even bring up during the live show. So it's very helpful. If you want to support us, there's a support option up top or infectionpodcast.com forward slash support. Yes, I want to thank our buddy UGX Vibe for hitting us up with the uh, 59 monthly subscription. Thanks, Bob. It is uh, greatly appreciated. And uh, thanks for your continued support. Brian, uh, thank you as always. Uh, greatly appreciated. Yeah. And uh, we will catch up with you uh, next Tuesday. Talk to you then. All righty, folks. Thank you uh, for joining us. As always, you can uh, follow me on Twitter at Nicholas M. Craig. You can check out my website, nickcraig.com and download the Wilmington's Morning News Podcast. And of course, if you missed any portion of this illustrious program, there's only one place to go. It's infectionpodcast.com. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Have a great week. We'll see you next time.